Hello everyone, this is Tailspin109 and welcome back to Let's Play The Legend of Zelda Wind Waker. After many distractions, I finally went to the Three Pearl Islands and got into the Tower of the Gods, our next dungeon in the game. And this one is pretty darn interesting. For one thing, this is the one dungeon in the game where water actually has a part in the dungeon a bit, meaning we actually get to use the King of Red Lions for a little bit in this dungeon, which is pretty cool. There will also be some other new mechanics that will be introduced here that will become very prevalent. First off though, let's go in here and meet a Yellow Chew Jelly. These are similar to the Blue Chew Jellies, except we don't really get anything out of them. Oh, darn it. Except some potential green chew jelly. Now there's one item we need to try and get in here. Just one though. Oh, that's not it. I think what we're looking for is actually in here. No! Are you are you kidding? Uh I just wanted to be up there. But yeah, I think that's the item we're looking for is. There's nothing else in here other than one chest. And this is actually an optional room. You don't have to get this. I would recommend it though, because it it holds the map. And you know how nice it is to have a map of a dungeon. If we take a look, we have four floors. This time most of it isn't that big, but there's a lot of backtracking in this particular dungeon. Okay, but that's it for that room. We're done. So let's move on to our first true task in the dungeon. What we have to do in this first part of the dungeon is get rid of that waterfall so that we can progress to the next area of the dungeon, the upper floors. Of course, the water keeps going up and down, so there's a little bit of waiting involved with this dungeon in the early portions. But this is a cool idea. A dungeon that was made specifically to try and find the next hero. That, that's honestly pretty cool. And here we are. Puzzles. This switch has to be pressed down the whole time. Yep, they've actually come back from the N64 games, and Oracle games, actually. Alright, so here's another puzzle. We need to get across with this rainbow bridge, but, of course, once we get off of it, that's it. I think it's pretty clear what you gotta do, though. Can you actually climb on this box? No, you can't. It's too small. I really probably should take care of him. Because he's otherwise going to become a royal pain. There we go. Now, of course, the water's just going to come back, so we'll still have to wait. So, yeah. There's a bit of waiting in the early parts of this dungeon, and it can feel kind of slow, even if it is pretty unique. Did you hear those drums? Pretty cool. Alright, there we go. So, let's take this, um, statue thing and bring it over. Hopefully the water doesn't rise. Good, it didn't. <laughs> and there we go. Place this statue down and we'll be able to explore more of the dungeon. Oh yeah, and I forgot to mention, this is one of those parts of the game where you actually can't use the sail. Instead, you need to use the cruise ability with the R button to get anywhere in this dungeon, because there's no wind! I mean, we're inside of a tower with pretty much no legitimate windows, so... Nowhere for wind to come through. Alright, here is our next destination. It's got more basic switch puzzles. Thing with this game is a lot of the puzzles are 
incredibly basic. Th there aren't many hard puzzles at all in this game. Which was good for six-year-old me. Playing this game as a six-year-old, I think I can say, um... Not a bad choice for a first Zelda game if you're really young, just because... It's not exactly the most perplexing game in the series. The combat's pretty simple too, it's not too hard of a game for the most part. Now we gotta do a little bit of platforming, so... I wasn't finished yet! Now we have to wait. Oh well, we'll just wait. I can wait. Any day now, thank you. There we go. Yeah, it's essentially a quick block puzzle. Not too hard. Well, at this point, I guess that's a given. Some. This is also a torch puzzle. I probably should have waited because I don't think I'm gonna make it in time. Oh, I made it. And there we go. Again, pretty simple. And a small key! Let me guess, chew jellies are gonna start appearing? Yep. These yellow chew jellies are definitely a trap. There we go! Let's move on to our next destination now that we have a key. But where do we go? We didn't see any other paths to go, did we? But we do have the map, so that can help. I see some cracked walls up ahead. I wonder. Hmm. Let me get out some bombs. There we go. Now we have a space to go through. It's fun to make the King of Red Lines wobble like this. Well, I guess since we're stuck down here, I might as well blow up the other ones. There we go. Alright, I'll just wait out here. There we go. Guess I'll go this way first. And I... We're gonna have to come back here later. But I'm sure you know what item we're getting now. Look at that fire. Anyways, here's the compass. The ice cream cone compass. Alright, so now we can see the treasures. And the boss, of course, is on the top floor. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There's still eight more chests. A fair amount. Well, first off, there is a small hidden torch puzzle we can deal with to get a chest to appear. But I think I'll get it after going through this door because I don't feel like waiting for more water. There we go. Now we'll have to kill the chew jellies. Which, of course, we can't really do while the water's up. They're... they're closing in on me. Ooh, this is scary. Okay, I just have to move. Oh, oh yeah, they can drop red shoot jellies as well. Hurry! Good! There we go. So this room really expects you by now to figure out the best way to deal with them, and you could use the Deku Leaf to stun them, you can use the Boomerang, or you could kill them with a bomb. Or if the bomb doesn't get them, the impact of the nearby explosion might still stun them. I like the Boomerang, it feels the quickest and most efficient. Hey, you think I can throw it into place? Eh. Oh my gosh, I actually did it. And there, that's basically the first part of the dungeon. Nothing too terribly complex, honestly. 
Let's open this. I think it's just a joy pendant, though. Yeah, I don't need those anymore. That's the thing. Oh, well. I still want to get all the treasures in the dungeon. Oh, man. Now I have to wait. Oh, that didn't take long. Actually, let's see if I can just swim there before the water goes down. It'd be faster than using the King of Red Lines. There we go. Bye, King. We won't need him for the rest of the dungeon. And now here comes something that's really annoying. Beamoses! Freaking hate these things. And we'll have to evade him while solving another switch puzzle. Again, it's not very difficult. They're slowly making it more complex by adding more switches, but it doesn't really mean a whole lot when you're just doing the same thing. The only thing you might be questioning is, how do you get the third switch kept down? Well, this time it's not something you have to worry about. As soon as they're all pressed, they remain active permanently now. So we can just easily step off. There we go. Don't worry, things do get a l more interesting in this dungeon. The first part of the dungeon is very simple, and the water mechanic can slow things down a bit, but there actually is stuff in this dungeon, don't worry. As a matter of fact, we're entering the main part of the dungeon right now. I don't even... Oh, wait, that platform's probably for Tingle Tuner, which I can't use, because I don't have anything to connect to GBA with. Alright, here we are, the main part of the dungeon. But we go in a strict order. For instance, it wants us to go this way first. Can I get on? You're gonna make me wait. Of course you would. There we go. He's down. Alright, get on the platform, and if we look there, there's another eye to shoot. We can't do anything about that right now, so let's just go this way. And here we go. We need... Introduce a new mechanic to this dungeon. And this will be a prevalent mechanic in future dungeons to come. come we can call a partner towards our aid. In this dungeon, we deal with these uh, statues. And he will slowly follow us around. So we gotta get him around this little labyrinth. Not very difficult. You just gotta take your time. Because otherwise, the corner he tries to turn in might not be good enough to get past the pits. Now this part I remember stunts me as a kid because I didn't know how to get him over. Mostly because I didn't realize you could pick him up and then just run across. Simple, but I didn't pick up on it back then. Oh, more chew jellies. You got an idea? Well, I got an idea too. There we go. Alright, there we go. That is one statue down. Also, you probably noticed there are no teleport pots in this dungeon, so no quick way to backtrack, such as the chest we couldn't get earlier on. But hey, look! A new song! This becomes a central mechanic for dungeons, this particular song. It's what makes the partner mechanic actually fleshed out. This is the command melody. I can wait beyond the doors, control them and guide them to their places of truth, to open the path to the gods. And it's from here on that the puzzles actually do start to get a little more interesting. And as a little kid, it was actually difficult. They're still not actually tricky puzzles, but they're the very least creative. So, we're actually going to want to have the Wind Waker out throughout this dungeon now. Oh boy. You could 
stun him with a Deku Leap, but it's kind of slow, and from there, this angle, going to be a little hard to do. So let's jump across and enter the next room to find our second statue buddy. Hi, statue buddy! So we call him, and then this is where things get a little more interesting and really reinforces you how to use the command melody. Because there is no quick way across except here. Now, of course, the statue won't has to get across that, so... We actually have to stay here instead of placing the statue or something here to get across. So it's a little backwards. It's still not very hard to figure out. This is to make sure you understand how to use the command melody, basically. Which is nice. It's nice that they teach you in this way. It's not heavily tutorialized, but it's a clear understanding of what you have to do, generally. Okay, I guess it wasn't too clear for me when I was six. There we go. Let's go! Now then, we're going to place him right here, because that unlocks a door, and someone has to be on that... Oh? Hello? Hey! Link, it is I, the King of Reliance. I am afraid there are some areas to which you will not be able to bring the servants of the tower. But do not fear leaving them behind. Once you've awakened them, they will wait patiently for your return. Of this I assure you. Okay, uh, thanks. It's probably... There. Spin attacks do more damage. Now then, we want to get into that room over there. So let's swing our way over. We swing. I want a little more speed before jumping over there. And get ready because in here is actually our mini boss of the dungeon. Here we go. Say hello to the Dark Nuts. They make their appearance in the game here. And they're heavily armored, so... At the start of a fight with a Dark Nut, you need to start with some parry attacks to try and get rid of the armor. And the helmet, too. Let's try and get rid of the helmet. There we go. Now we can steal his Knight's Crest. And then get hit. And then just do some basic sword play with him. Be careful, though. Um, he can have some... Very powerful attacks with powerful knockbacks, such as that. Do not get hit by that. Now this first Dark Nut is pretty easy, but there are other variants later in the game that are actually a lot deadlier. This first one though is pretty easy. Alright, there we go. And it is within here that we get our dungeon item, which I think you know what it is, honestly. It's kind of obvious, based off the eye switches. Yes, it's the bow. There we go. We can carry up to 30. Now, you could have the darkness destroy these pillars to try and get items, but I want to test something. Can you actually blow these up to make them fall? I've never tried with a bomb. You, you can! Uh, cool! I doubt these will give me anything, but you know what? I'll check, because I'm almost ready to end the video here. We're roughly halfway through the dungeon, so this is a pretty good place to stop, if I do say so myself. Just let me blow this one up. Alright. That'll do it for now. In the next video, we will go ahead and finish up this dungeon. But until then, this has been TalesFan109, and have a nice day!